In this lecture, we're going to be talking about rewriting equations and formulas. And you guys have actually done this a lot before. Um, if you think back to Algebra 1, whenever you are graphing linear equations, most of you probably got it into slope-intercept form, which was y equals mx plus b. So you had to solve the equation for y if y already wasn't isolated. So um, in our problems today, it's going to tell us to solve for a specific variable. And we're really going to be using the same exact steps that we did when we solved um, equations earlier. The only difference is that our answer is not going to just be a number. It is going to be an expression that has variables in it. Looking at number 1, we have 7x minus 3y equals 8, and it's telling us to solve for y. So this is the type of problem you guys are, are used to doing. So we need to get y all by itself. So I would start by getting rid of the 7x by subtracting it from both sides. And when we subtract it from both sides, it doesn't matter if we write 8 minus 7x or negative 7x plus 8. Either way would be completely fine. The final thing we need to do is to still get y by itself, and we have that negative 3 as the coefficient. Negative 3 and y are multiplied by each other, so we're going to undo that with division. So we're going to have to divide every single thing by negative 3. And when we divide by negative 3, if we look at the right side here, 8 and negative 3 don't reduce, negative 7 and negative 3 don't reduce. And so it's fine if we just leave it as it is. The biggest mistake I see on problems like this is let's say this 8 had been a 6. A lot of you might try and reduce the 6 and the negative 3 and then just throw that negative 3 away. And it's important that we remember that when I'm dividing a binomial by a number, I need to divide each of those terms by that number. So the other way that we could go ahead and write this answer would be by splitting it up, like y equals negative 8 thirds plus 7 thirds x. I would accept either of these two answers and you would receive full credit. Some of you may be wondering, why would we ever use this other than when we're trying to get an equation into slope-intercept form? And the reason why this can be very helpful comes up in problem number two. Here we have our formula for finding the perimeter of a rectangle. So the perimeter equals 2L plus 2W, and here it's telling us to solve for W. Now the reason why this would be helpful is because if we needed to substitute in for a variable multiple times, it can save us a lot of time and effort. For example, if we had a multi-step problem where part A said find if the perimeter was 50 and the length was 10, what is the width? Yes, we could substitute in for L and then do steps to, sub to isolate W. But if B gave us different values for the perimeter and the length, we would have to be doing those same steps again. And if C gave us different values, we'd be doing it again. And honestly, that's kind of a waste of our time. So it'd be easier if we got W by itself and just did all those algebraic steps once. And then we could quickly find our final answer. So... Let's actually go into number two here. For number two, we want to get w by itself, so we need to start by getting rid of that 2l. So I'm going to subtract 2l from both sides. Then to get w by itself, we're going to divide everything by 2. So if you gave me an answer of p minus 2l divided by 2 equals w, that would be correct. The other way we could do this is to split it up and do p divided by 2 minus, when I do 2l divided by 2, they actually cancel out, so I would just be left with l equals w. Either of these answers would be correct. Number three, we're trying to solve for y, so once again, I want to get rid of everything over here other than the y, so I'm going to get rid of this 2 thirds x first by subtracting 2 thirds x from both sides. Or another way we could think about it, if you are someone that hates dealing with fractions, we could always get rid of those fractions right away also. 
and it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and model doing it that way just so um, we remember how to do that. But in order to get rid of the fractions, I would multiply by the LCD. The LCD here would be the smallest number that 3 and 2 both go into, which would be 6. So I'm going to multiply all three of these terms by 6, and I wrote it as 6 over 1 just to help me out in remembering that I'm only multiplying the numerator by 6. When I distribute, I get 4x minus 3y equals 72. Now, in my mind, this looks a lot easier to go about solving than the original problem, but keep in mind this is not a step we have to do, it's just something that you may choose to do. Now I need to get rid of this 4x. Since it's a positive 4x, I'm going to subtract it from both sides. And I get negative 3y equals 72 minus 4x. My final step in getting y all by itself is going to be to get rid of that coefficient of negative 3. Since negative 3 and y are multiplied, I'm going to divide to get rid of it and I end up getting y equals 72 minus 4x over negative 3 and that is my final answer. Number four is the formula for converting temperature from Celsius into Fahrenheit and let's say we wanted to switch it around and make it so it's turning Fahrenheit into Celsius so we are going to solve for C first thing I need to do is get rid of this 32 so I'm going to subtract that from both sides so I have F minus 32 equals 9 fifths C now I need to get C by itself so I need to think what is going to turn this coefficient into a 1 and that would be multiplying by the reciprocal which is 5 over 9 so when I do that I have 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32 equals C I would be totally fine if you left this as your answer because we have accomplished what the problem is asking us to do, which is solve for C. If we wanted to, we could also distribute the 5 ninths to both of those terms and give that as a fi final answer as well. Our final example of the day, number 5, um, says given x plus xy equals 1, A, solve the equation for y, then B, find the value of y when x equals negative 1. So it looks like they're telling us to isolate for y and then go ahead and substitute in. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this and try and figure out what exactly we need to do to get y by itself. It looks like the first thing I would need to do is move this x. Now the reason why we can't add these two terms together is because they don't combine the same variables. Here we have x, y, on this one, we don't have a y involved, so they're not like terms. So I have x, y equals 1 minus x. And this is probably the toughest step in this problem. y is still not all by itself. It's multiplied by x. And how do we undo multiplication? Well, we need to divide. So I'm going to divide everything by x. And I get y equals 1 minus x over x. I could also simplify this and divide both things in the numerator by x and get y equals 1 over x minus 1 because x over x is 1. Either of those answers would be completely fine. So now let's move on to part b. Part b is telling us to substitute n when x equals negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and use the second way we wrote the formula and the reason being in this first one there's two places where I substitute in. In this one, there's only one place, so that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. So I have y equals 1 over, and then instead of x, I need to substitute in what x is equal to. So I'm writing negative 1 there, so I get 1 over negative 1 minus 1. Well, we know that 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So when x is equal to negative 1, our y value is negative 2. Now I want to look at this problem again, and I put a star by it because this is going to be the most difficult thing we go through, and this is something that I would expect you to be able to get correct on a quiz. So I'm taking that same exact equation, but instead 
of solving for y, we're going to solve for x. And that definitely has some problems in there um, because we have two x's in that equation. So right now I want you guys to pause the video and try and do this on your own. Then come back and press play and we'll go through it together. My guess is a lot of you tried to divide or do kind of weird sorts of stuff. But if we think back to Algebra 1 and factoring, we learned about a greatest common factor, GCF. And if I look at these two terms, they have a GCF and it's X. So what I did is I factored out the X. And when I factor out, it's like the opposite of distributing. So whatever I'm left with inside, if I redistributed this X, it would equal the previous line. So when I divide X by X, I'm left with 1. When I divide XY by X, I'm left with Y. At this point, I have a multiplication going on. Just like if it said 3X, it says X times 1, minus, or 1 plus Y. So I need to get rid of that 1 plus Y by dividing. My final answer here would be X equals 1 over 1 plus Y. The only other thing on this set of notes, um, I've included a bunch of formulas that you learned back in algebra and geometry, and I just put them all in one place so that you can be familiar with them. Um, it's not like the you're going to have to memorize those for the test, but honestly, most of them you should already have memorized.